Hello everyone, and welcome to my very first Outer Worlds character build. This is the Soul Sniper, a character designed to excel in all aspects without the need for companions. The video will be split into sections, each with their own timestamp found in the description below. What this means is that you can easily navigate to and from sections of the video as you please. Additionally, I'll be leaving a Nukes Dragons link down there in the description too, just to make things even easier to keep track of. Also, as this is my first Outer Worlds build, make sure to let me know in the comments if there's anything format-wise you'd like to see altered in the future. To start off the build, we're looking at attributes. For this one, I've kept things nice and simple. Intelligence and Perception are maxed out, labelled as very high, and everything else is kept as average. What this means is that you get the best possible critical damage and headshot damage without having to weaken anything else. Right from the start, this will make it so you don't feel particularly weak at anything, but as soon as you get your hands on a sniper, you'll suddenly realise just how strong you are. The two primary skill sets you will want to choose are Ranged and Stealth. This is obviously to play even more into the sniper aspect of things, ensuring you can stay hidden whilst lining up your single shot which will take down the enemy. Playing even more into this, the skills I got to 100 with this build were Long Guns and Sneak. As you might imagine, long guns cover sniper rifles. Having this skill maxed out means you get tactical time dilation effects, extra critical slash weak spot damage, and ignore all armour with criticals. With a base 300% long guns crit chance, you can imagine that you're going to be making good use of those critical damage modifiers. As for sneak, this also will add significantly to your damage output. With this max, you have a base 75% sneak attack damage modifier, along with extra weak point damage and 50% armour penetration with all sneak attacks. Stack all this with a long gun skill, and you shouldn't come across many enemies which can withstand a single shot from your sniper. As for additional skills, I got all of the dialogue skills to 60, which meant I could cower, scramble, and terrify my enemies, but, more importantly, had a decent chance of using speech to get through tricky situations where I might not want matters to come to combat. In a similar frame of thought, I had Hack and Lockpick at 50, meaning I could bypass several different interior locations and often find alternate solutions to problems. I would actually advise every single character get Lockpick to 20, as the skill unlock there makes any locks requiring one magpick free to open. As so many lock containers and doors are set as one pick, what this means is that you should never run out of mag locks, even if you want to rummage around in every container you come across. The final skills to mention are Medical, Science, and Engineering. Medical and Science I got to 50, and Engineering I pushed further to 60. Each of these skills has great utility value, helping you heal more effectively, tinker with equipment to raise how strong it is, and field repair your weapons in order to keep them in shape. For the most part, I ignored the other skills, as they weren't really relevant to the build. As Dodge was naturally at 18, I did decide to spend a couple of points to unlock the leap ability, but when a skill is that close, you may as well get the benefit. On to perks now, where we start with Slow the World. This perk increases your tactical time dilation meter by 25%. TTD is great fun to use in this game, and really is the standout element when it comes to combat. Next is the Lone Wolf perk, one that I feel might be a little controversial. This increases your damage by 25% when alone in the party. What this means is that, if you decide to not have any companions tag along with you, then you deal significantly more damage. Obviously, companions can be a great part of this game though, so I wouldn't treat this as a death sentence to all companions, but instead as giving you more options. You can have companions tag along for their dialogue, but, when you really need to dish out the hurt, send them back to your ship and go solo. A simple perk now, Strider. This gives you 25% faster walk speed. Nothing fancy here, it's just nice to move about quicker, both in combat and just in general exploration. Another handy little perk is High Maintenance. This will reduce the rate at which your equipment decays by 25%. This means you spend less time repairing equipment and more time fighting. Finally, in our tier 1 perks, we have Quick and the Dead. This increases tactical time dilation recharge rate by 50%. We already have the meter increased, so we may as well ensure we can use all that meter on a regular basis. The first of our tier 2 perks ties into this too. The Reaper perk will refill a quarter of your TTD meter with each kill. 
This is how I'm able to chain several sniper kills at the start of a fight. Land your first sneak attack and then use the slow time to rapidly land shot after shot and see how many enemies you can kill before the meter runs dry. There were several times in my playthrough where I wiped out entire squads of marauders in a single round of tactical time dilation. Our next perk, Scanner, gives us an extra 20% headshot slash weak spot damage whilst in TTD, helping to ensure that it's only taking us a single shot to reap the benefits of Reaper. We also have the Harvester perk, which restores health to us every time we get a kill. Not only does this add a nice synergy to the build with kill chaining, but it means we can handle some small arms fire without having to worry about using the inhaler. Away from combat now with our next two perks, Snake or Salesman will allow you to sell items to vendors 20% higher than normal. Bits are incredibly important in this game, so you want to make sure you're getting as many as you can. The Soliloquy perk ups all your dialogue skills by 10 points, while somewhat ironically being a word I can't even begin to pronounce. At the time I was writing this script, I was actually chuckling to myself about how much I'd struggle reading it, because I haven't the faintest how it's supposed to be pronounced. Enough of the tier 2 perks, let's move on to the final tier. Boom Headshot is another kill base perk, this time making it so that your headshot kills deal 25% splash damage to enemies within 2.5 meters of the target, perfect for when enemies decide to group up. Steady Hand adds yet another kill perk, this time removing all accuracy penalties after a kill, making it all too easy to get a chain of perfect headshots. Our final kill perk is Confidence. After a kill, your next shot is a guaranteed critical. Honestly, this is probably a bit overkill, but at this point I think I just got mad with power, and just wanted to see how ridiculous I could make things. Onto a couple of sensible perks now, Super Pack Mule increases your carry capacity by 100, something that's all the more important for you if you're not gaining bonus carry weight from companions. The Armor Master perk will give a 10% boost to your armor rating, and double any skill bonuses the armor applies, a benefit that I just couldn't resist. You may have noticed that my character is a level 28, yet I have the same amount of perks as a level 30 character. This is because I allowed myself to suffer a flaw. Flaws are permanent debuffs that will sometimes appear whilst playing. They can be ignored if you don't wish to suffer them, but if you choose to take the penalty, then you get a free perk point to spend. The flaw I ended up with was Robophobia. This reduces dexterity, perception, and temperament by one whenever attacked by auto-mechanicals. As a stealth-based character, I felt I could probably handle this, but which flaws you take will be entirely down to how the game unfolds for you. I mentioned in the perks section two different perks that only work if you don't have any companions with you. Although this build is designed for more of a solo player, you can still feel free to travel with companions from time to time notably to complete companion quests, which are very rewarding. Just remember, if you want to be the best you can be, leave them on the ship. Somewhat unsurprisingly for this build, the most important piece of equipment will be a sniper rifle. For me, this was a TNL Hunting Rifle Ultra, which I modded out with a Funtimes Barrel, Magnum Magazine, and Extendo Sight. These increase critical damage, magazine size, and weapon range respectively. The Fun Times Barrel is probably the most important mod, as it ups the damage you'll normally be dealing. As for the other two, they are optional, but extra range and magazine size meant I was able to engage from further away, and rarely found myself having to reload in the middle of a fight. As for my other weapons, I had a Sword Off Shotgun Mark II with the Mag to Zap mod, making it ideal for taking down robots at close range. For more fleshy enemies, I wielded Finn's Force, a unique Emery rifle which you can unlock in the main story by sticking with Phineas Wells. Emery damage weapons are fun to mess around with, but I found it paled in comparison to my final weapon, the TNL Assault Rifle Ultra. Accurate, strong, and with a decent fire rate, this is a gun for every occasion. If enemies are getting too close, you can spray them down. If something survived your sniper, then tap fire this whilst aiming to finish them off. If you told me I could only ever use one gun for the rest of my time playing this game, then it would be the TNL Assault Rifle Ultra. This message brought to you by TNL. As for apparel, I had one outfit for combat and one for conversation. For combat, the anti-riot gear is medium weight armour that raises your long gun skill by 7. Add on a hunter kit and the nightingale step mod and you've got yourself armour that not only protects you, but also ups damage output and makes you harder to detect. The helmet I wore with this was the Armoured Ballistics Riot Control Helmet. 
This has the benefit of an additional plus 5 to long guns. However, it has been painted by a toddler, so you decide if it's really worth wearing. Guess it's just another incentive to make sure the enemy doesn't see you. My conversationalist clothing was made up of a protective clothing with safety harness, equipped with a silver tongue kit mod. This means a total of plus 10 to all dialogue skills, ensuring you can talk your way around most people you encounter. Adding to this is a nice hat, a unique top hat that adds 7 to your persuade skill. This can be found in the Monarch Wilderness, in a church just a short way southeast of Stella Bay. The hat initially is being sported by a rather dapper skeleton. I guess he doesn't need it anymore. Factions with this build are pretty easy, as you don't really have to side with anyone specifically. Instead, your goal should be more focused on not pissing anyone off so much that they go after you. When you spend most of your life with nobody watching your back, you don't want anyone out to get you. This build is a slight spin on what I did for my first playthrough, and in that playthrough, I had most of the factions friendly to me, and despite siding with Phineas, the board was only slightly put off. Although it's best to keep all the various factions in your good books, you can decide to work against some of them if it suits your interests. Just make sure to sleep with one eye open. The brands don't take too kindly to troublemakers after all. The Soul Sniper had always been a loner who put his focus into his work rather than relationships. As an orphan with no long-standing friendships, he knew that the only person looking out for you was yourself. When joining the military, he specifically worked towards becoming a sniper for the express purpose of having a smaller number of relationships to maintain. Landing a bullseye at 200 yards was simple compared to having to come up with small talk topics. Despite his naturally reclusive nature and tendency to be a lone wolf, the Soul Sniper didn't put people off as much as he might have thought. He was perfectly competent in conversation and could even prove rather charming when the situation called for it. As for how he ended up aboard the Hope, that was thanks in part to being a member of a team of engineers, being transported to Halcyon to help with all manner of tasks that a new colony almost certainly had to deal with. For him, the decision to travel away from Earth was an easy one. There was no one on Earth he had ties to. Might as well carry on life in space. At least then there's a better chance of some peace and quiet. And there you have it, my very first Outer Worlds build. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like, and do make sure to leave feedback in the comments, specifically in terms of the format of the video. If you want something video related changed in future builds, then let me know now and I'll see if I can do it. If you just fancy more Outer Worlds builds, then make sure to subscribe and consider clicking that notification bell too. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.